Hey there, Gunther Bovine here. I'm, uh, I've got enough experience now to go up to level three. So I'm going to kind of wrap up level two. So I'm going to do some talking about money. No quests this time, just talking about money. Uh, and some crafting, some other issues. So uh, I've got my daily dice. I'm going to roll. So see what I get. I said I was going to do that once per level. This is the end of this. Woo! 300 more experience points, two potions of haste. So... I'm going to hold on to the potions of ace, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we are right there. I come over here. This is General Fender right here in the middle of the marketplace. I'm going to go talk to him, and one thing uh, I had trouble before, didn't really want to do, is this docent. I wanted to sell this docent. And if I go through the list, it is not there. And the reason it's not there is it's damaged. You can see in the blue bar down there, it's got a durability of 47 to 50. You can't sell an item if it's damaged. So I have to repair it first. So I'm going to repair the docent. That's cost me three silver, three copper. And now I go back over to the cell. There's the docent. I can sell it now for for five um so and i can sell that i can click sell and sell that now one thing i wanted to talk about also is haggle so right now as you can see my skills haggle is a minus two so one nice thing about haggle is you don't lose anything by being negative it's a negative haggle is considered the same as zero so i have right here something haggle two I put that on, and that takes, so if you look at that price, it's five and five, uh, or the, the shield up on the, the top of the shop window is 120, and I put that on there, takes my haggle up to zero, and nothing changes, price doesn't change. So it really doesn't do anything good to have that. Now, kind of got my items pulled out here so I can take a look at them, and one of the things to talk about is you you always want to look at the best. Uh, it, well, DDO takes the best of any item. So if you have two things that have molt that have the same effect, you're only get one, one effect on that. So like this engraved circlet here gives me will save plus one. Well, the Enger's gift it also gives gives me plus one my will saves. So if I look at my will save, it's plus one. If I put on the engraved circlet, it stays plus one. So I might as well sell that because it's going to give me absolutely nothing. Uh, so we're gonna, I will eventually sell that. Now, uh, kind of looking at what items I have, looking, planning to, I'm going to be going to level three. What am I going to do here? Um, so this, my hat, that haggle doesn't really give me anything. Engraved circlet doesn't give me, I could wear this hat. But, eh, I don't care about him to use magic device. Now, big thing is if I, I don't want to use this, wear this hat if I don't provide any value. Because if it gets damaged, I have to repair it before I can sell it. So, if I'm not going to get any value out of it, there's no point in me wearing it. Come over here, braces, spell saves plus one. Again, I'm getting already spell saves plus one from Andrew's gift. No point in going there. This guy here, strength plus one, constitution plus one. Again, I'm already getting strength plus one. And so... You don't get any value uh, if you're at an odd number. You only get value at it. So you see my modifier is plus two. Take that off there. Now 14. Modifier stays the same. So unless I can take the strength up to 16, it's really not any value in doing that. So that's not going to give me a thing. This guy here, protection one ton, impotent plus three. Eh, I probably still stay with the axe bait. This guy here, gracious. Ooh. Um, so. This is going to allow me to go to strength plus two. That's going to be good news. A docent, here we go. That's going to allow me plus two. That's going to increase my armor class. So, um, and it's going to give me spell resistance plus four. So that's going to be pretty awesome. This here, eh, it's crap. You know, things I don't really care about. and Not nearly as good as that. So coming over here, looking at this. Wow, this is, this is a great weapon. Does better damage than my, it's a one-handed weapon. Does it do happen with Vorpal? Is is really an awesome, uh, a 
an awesome attribute to have on this. And it's not only that it's vorpal, it's got vorpal and feeding, and feeding is also a very awesome attribute. So this has two, and they're both based off of, you know, vorpal die rolls. So a vorpal die roll is whenever you roll a 20, uh, it checks to see if there's a vorpal hit. If you, it basically doesn't roll again to see if you would hit the, do a normal die roll. And if you would hit on that second die roll, then you get a vorpal hit. With this guy, if you did a vorpal hit, you're, you're going to automatically kill your uh, target and you're going to get five temporary uh, hit points for it. So uh, that's just sweet, sweet, sweet for a, a level two weapon. So when I could go to level three, I could take um, Dwarven Axe as a, a feat and be able to do that. But it really doesn't make sense with my build. I'd have to cap, you know, really make it, I'd have to have a shield. Well, I have shield spell, so eh, I'm going to end up selling that. And the rest of these items aren't very good. So now we're going to go, we're going to go over to the crafting hall, and I'm going to talk about um, selling these guys here. We're going to be putting those on the auction house. I want to talk about, oh, we got to sell this. Get a little. Expeditious Retreat. I'm going to go to House K. Go visit their crafting hall. The House K is this one here. Kondarik. The crafting hall is just right there. Reason House K is it's, it's the shortest walk to the crafting hall from the market, middle of the marketplace. Um, this guy here would give us a crafting quest. We'll come back to that some other day. So the reason we're coming here is I want to show you those collectibles. I talked about that's how we're really going to make money is off our collectibles. And so I pulled them out, and you can take a look. We're going to change this up to 150. That's our current maximum level. I want to look at what recipes use these, um, and then how many. So string of beads, I'll use three. See, so it goes from level 15 up to level 23. Those are there. So we need to get more beads before we put those on the market. Our sweet white caps also use three. And they also go from 15 to, wow, 102. Man, so that's not that great of a shard. So again, this is kind of a low end uh, ingredient. Oh, we only need two of these. And that's up from level 14 up to level 18. So again, a good, and some of these strength plus two, wizardry one, so these are good resistance one. These are good, pretty good low end um, uh, crafting. And then here we go. This is, uh, just need one of these. So we're gonna sell these, we're gonna sell, sell these by one. So three, sell three, two, two, one, one. Now we're gonna come over to our auction house. I'm just gonna, Toss these in here to create a little bit of room. And we're going to see what are these things we're selling for. So the research notebook, right now there's none for buyout. So we're going to change that. What's going to happen is people are going to craft. They're going to go, oh, I'm going to make this. Oh, darn. I need a page torn from research notebook. Let me go to the auction house and buy it real quick. Oh. I, they want to buy it right away, so they want to buy it. They want to do a uh, a buyout. So I'm gonna put it there. We're only talking two platinum for this, and I'm gonna do. I think it's probably five thousand for those little little recipes. Five thousand, probably about as much as we'll get. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna throw both of those out there. These guys here. I was, what I did, I, to do that split, I hold down the control key and drag, then it'll ask me how I want to split. So, so we can do that. We're going to do the same pricing. The initial price, I generally set, it depends on how unsure I am about this, uh, 
So I always want to set the initial price at a price that I'm willing, I'd be happy to actually sell it for. So selling these things for uh, 5,000 a piece would be just awesome. I mean, 2,000 a piece would still be great. All right, so that's those, those things. Now, this is the one weapon that I think is worth selling. And wow, it's a plus six four ball. So let's just kind of go over here, go weapons, exotic. And where is, that's, that's Marshall, sorry. Go exotic, Dwarven Axe, one to four, and see, there's only one ax, and it's really, it's not a very good ax. So if somebody's looking for a low level ax, that's really, ours is gonna be better than that. Let's go up to eight, see what happens. Eight, see, this is plus six, 4,000. This is a really crappy thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go big for this one. It's always better. This is gonna cost a little more, 16 coins, but it's it's generally to me kind of. Uh, I'm gonna start off a really big price, and see if I get it. So 5,000, 25,000. Again, I'm kind of unsure about this. So rather than have like a, uh, the auction initial price be 20, 40 percent of the buyout, I've got it as 20 percent. So a little wider spread. But again, 5,000, and I'd be happy if I could sell that much. So, um, so we posted that auction. And so we'll, level three, we'll come back and we'll take a look at this. And um, so come here, gather up my collectibles. And that, that is it for uh, making money. Our next thing will be uh, leveling up.